It's in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. For this cause God gave them unto vile affections, for even the woman did change their natural use unto that which is against nature. And likewise also men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in the lust one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving themselves the recompense of the error that was meek. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, and malignity, backbiters, haters of God, covenant breakers. A gay lady called Rosemary, a lecturer in gay theory, who lectures in America on gay theory, she's a professor. She read this chapter and she noticed this. It didn't pick on gay people singular. It mentions backbiters. It mentions covenant breakers. She was struck by it's not picking on any one group. And she became a Christian and realized that actually she was being prejudiced against the Bible. She was saying the Bible's homophobic, but the Bible was not picking on one group. It was saying all sin. So she left it, lecturing in gay theory, she became a born again Christian. That passage basically said it wasn't convenient to be gay. That passage is saying, sir, well, as well as that in modern times it's saying when the modern world thinks it's clever, God gave them over to it. So you can have your gay pride, but God's saying, that's God saying, you want it, you go and have it. You want it, you go and have it. But it's God's judgment on a modern society. That's what it's saying. But it, but, but it says this. It says this. For the gospel is the power of God unto salvation in that same chapter. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation for the Jew and the Gentile. In other words, for gay, straight, open relationship, whatever, it's for all of us to save us. So Christ died on that cross with a crown of thorns on his head for the gay community. The Son of God died for you on that cross and gave his life for you on that cross. He shed his blood for you on that cross and gave. No, I will come in. He died on that cross for the gay community. He shed his blood for you on the gay community. He gave his life for you for the gay community. He gave his all. He took the wrath for the gay community. He took the punishment for the gay community. That's why he died on a cross. He shed his blood for the gay community. Have you ever lied? He died on a cross for your lives. I don't really care. There is a heaven and a hell. Say that again, say that again. People say that Jesus is the Lord, they are infallible. Jesus is infallible. Infa infallible. Yeah. Right. So by that law, right, Christ never ever wanted someone to pray for him on behalf of the whole Christian community. Well, any sort of faith. Well, no one, no, no, no. You need to be a bit more coherent when you say that. You're right. saying Jesus is unfathomable. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're saying that. Yeah, but by this Jesus, is your no, 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 no. By Jesus being that right, unfathomable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That you preaching for him, you pledging your life to pray for such a man. Therefore, you're contradicting yourself in so many ways. All right. Have you ever heard of Van Til? Call him Van Til. No, he's a theologian and he talks about the uh, analogy of language and there's a debate in theology and philosophy called the analogy of language. <laughs> language only describes part of God, can't describe all of God, yeah? But you even have that problem in science or philosophy or reality. Language only describes part of reality, not all of reality. 
So you'd have the same problem, not just with Christianity, but with your own view of reality. That's that, yeah, yeah. that, is, that yeah. is true, that but, is true. So, yeah. But the point is, for us, we believe that God is a covenant God, and so he helps us to understand reality through language. Language helps us by God being relational. Be God being yeah. relational helps us to have language that is relational to the world and to each other. But everybody has their, I, I understand, I, I perfectly, so, no, I perfectly so, understand so, so, that you have your own. So, so the simple, the, the simple <laughs> point, is, I'm talking about philosophy of language. The simple point is, is this, that we have a language, it's called the Bible. The Bible tells us to go out into all the world and preach the gospel. It tells us the wrath of God is coming upon everybody. It tells us that Jesus was punished on a cross for our sin. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but, but have a lasting life. But God also had many other sons. Yeah. The language is there for you to know, if you want to, that Christ died for you. I understand that. And you I, have to I, repent I, I, and believe. I have been christened. I was christened. I went to a baptism. I went to a baptism. now. Thank you. I went to a Baptist church for about a good seven years of my life. Yeah. Okay. I understand that. I did all of the praying. I drank the blood of Christ. I drank, you know, ate the bread. I did all of that. Right. Yeah. I did everything for that community. You know. Yeah. Every Sunday, you know, it was praying, it was Bible, it was everything like that. And I perfectly understand that you have your own views. You have, you have perfect right and perfect morals mm. to say what you're saying, and I perfectly respect you your choices but preaching out in the name of God saying everything from that Bible can also seem very offensive in a way because it can morally upset somebody okay. you, know, you know don't get me wrong but if I was to come to you and say some extremely things from other say I don't know if I was to take from Scientologists you know and aim a bunch of stuff at you like from them and I'm just saying for instance if you became upset or disgusted with what I was saying, that would be my fault for upsetting you. And by you doing that exact same thing to people of who are like 13 to, I don't know, 20 to 30 years old, mm. you know, they are also becoming quite upset. Okay. And can I'm, I come back I'm, not, I'm not saying that you're a bad person for you, but okay. I just rather you... Can, can I come back? You've said you're arguing. Yeah, I, do, no, I just want to say, I'd rather you do it in a more, like not shouting at Going okay. at them, you know what okay. I mean? Because it is seeming like you are aiming a lot of okay. built-up aggression okay. from the Bible at okay. people. Okay, yeah. you've, you've made your argument. Let me come back at you. Yeah, sure. Have you heard of modernism and postmodernism? Modernism from 1920s to 50s was there is right and wrong. Yeah. There is objective truth. So a Marxist and a Christian could be in the same street, and they the Marxists could say you're wrong to the Christian. Christians could say you're wrong to the Marxists. They still respect each other. That's modernism. It's yeah. truth. Yeah. Then, after the 50s, we have postmodernism. That is, there is no truth. All truths are the same. What you're saying, your view, is about postmodernism. If I was preaching this in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, and the Marxist was here, or the Buddhist was here, or the Muslim was here in the 1940s, everyone would understand that he thinks he's the truth, but I have the truth, but we respect each other. Exactly. And postmodernism says, no, we're all true. So you're coming from a postmodernist perspective. I'm preaching here truth. Just because I preach truth, what I believe is truth, it doesn't mean to say I don't really disrespect them. Exactly. Right? But every but everybody But you're everybody, coming from every, a, everybody has their own but, truth. But, everybody has their own view, whether or not you're Buddhist, pagan. Yeah, but you're postmodernist. Like, yeah. I'm I'm just saying that, like, even with everybody's views and where everybody is coming from, right? Personally, right, if two men want to pull down their pants and make have sex. In the eyes of everybody else, that is something lovely because them two men love each other. They want to be okay, with each other. Okay. okay? okay all right. If two straight people want to do it, if two animals want okay, to do it, I'll say, if somebody wants to be needy, what if they want to rape somebody? No. No, I'm just going to no, 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 you've made your argument. No, you made your argument. No, let me just go. Let me just go. made his argument. You've made your argument. If two people who are together and two people who love each other want to be together and be a whole that's perfectly fine and that is a beautiful thing you right, going on you but you going on <laughs> by just saying rape then right rape is not no wait a minute wait a minute rape is not wait a minute no 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 no, 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 no. no, no. Wait rape a minute. is not something you made your argument if somebody no, no, no. wants to go out somewhere wait a minute. you made your argument to be excuse me sir, you know? excuse me, sir. you made your argument you're saying if what two people want to love each other and have sex and the men and men you've made your argument but you said if it's their truth 
if it's their truth to kick a baby in, According to you, it's okay. You said if it's their truth. No, no. That's if they want to make love, you've just no, no, no. You've just no, turned, no. No, you've just turned no, that no, around, no. saying that right. if they wanted to kick a baby. It's the truth. Where did I? Where right. did I say is that? Is such thing as truth? truth to want to kick a is baby? Is the such truth? I've just said. You said that truth. It's a man, no. a man's truth. No. If they want to make yeah. love, no, you're, not. You're, you're not saying not putting violence to no. a child you're, because that no. is disgraceful. Yeah, but are you saying that truth is objective or subjective? Subjective. Is it subjective? Right. So you you've lost the argument. If they want to kick a baby, it's okay. You just said that truth's subjective. If it's objective, then you can make an argument. But you can't when you're saying it's subjective. If someone wants to kick a baby, it's okay. And it comes back to that point. There's objective truth. Yeah, but you're just coming out of nowhere going, oh, I've kicked baby. You just came out saying kick a baby. I didn't say anything about wanting to bestow right. violence right. to is a child. Rights? Is gay rights subjective, a person's opinion, or is it objective truth? Everybody has equal it's rights, objective. equal okay. value in How do world. you get objective truth in morality? Right, so it's subjective, you can't get... No, wait a minute, no, no, wait a minute. You said, you said homosexuality is objective. I asked for the intellectual ground for it, and you said F knows. That is the intellectual foundation that you give. So it's subjective, it's your opinion. It's not my opinion, though. It's well, give law. an intellectual defense of why it's objective. Give it. It's, it's the law that you're right. allowed to leave people to go and right. do. There are other laws in other countries that say it's wrong. It's subjective. Yeah, but we're in England. Yeah. We are in But it's subjective. It's now. subjective. If there are other laws, other nations that say... If, if there don't, are, don't, don't. He's a, he has a right to do that for the police, just yeah. in case. Can I ask you a few questions? Right. Some good questions there. Just stand there if you want to stand Some good there. questions there. We're going to ask you a few questions, mate, so uh, you can free well. this video online. Probably YouTube, yeah, that's yeah, okay. YouTube. If you want to stand there, you want to stand there. We're going to ask you, uh, what happens to your free will and the being being able to do whatever they want without judgment? And if it is God's entourage, what happens to him being omnibenevolent and all loving and loving everyone about it? He loves people no matter what. And also, yeah, it is in the Bible saying that you can't preach. And it is also against the law to preach in this premises, so. Okay, so you're asking about free will. Yeah. Well, people have a choice to do whatever they and want. They do, so why are you preaching against but God? Doing because what they God want to gave do. a law, the Ten Commandments. Don't right. lie, don't swear, right. don't commit adultery. You have a problem with the commandments. So yeah, God's given right. right. so so God's given a standard. Wouldn't give us the law. Yeah, we're all broken. Yeah, we're all broken. Secondly, so there's a law, right? The law of the land for preaching. The law of the land for preaching. If it's cancelled land, you're free to preach. Right. Well, brilliant. It's not allowed in this premises. This is where we walk. It's actually illegal. No, it's cancelled land. Uh, I don't give a shit if it is. It's cancelled land. Here. No, we're free. If it's cancelled land, we're free to do it. It's right. fine. Brilliant. It says you in don't the Bible have to have itself not no. to preach. No, it doesn't. Religion. No, it's a, it says, go read the Bible. Actually, go home. Show me. You've only got three pages. Show me. Out. Show, show me. Show me. Oh, show right. me where Christ it says. Swear, mate. Show me where it says not to preach. Well, sorry, I'm not a holy man myself, but I have show read the Bible. No, you made a claim. If you make a claim, you've got to back it up with evidence. So have you. Right. Two Timothy. Two Timothy four two. 2 Timothy 4.2 and the Matthew says don't know what that is. To preach the gospel to all nations. Talk about preaching the gospel. Okay, well, go 2, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Can you read it out for them? Okay, can, can, I, on, on that note, right, can I ask, just ask you one thing? You say in like, all this and all the preaching and then them going, him going off on that sort of things, right? Personally, right, you're preaching that about the gay pride you know, today. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. I haven't mentioned that all day. It's gay pride. I've not mentioned it all day. No, no, no you, listen. You, no, you, listen. You have said no, let me, finish. Let me finish. Like let me finish. Let me finish. No, let me finish. How long have I been here? How long have I been here? Too long. Did I mention gay thing? No. No. I mentioned it because a guy asked me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm just saying right. A gay person asked me. I didn't bring it up. Oh, no, no, no. I understand that the gay person. Yeah. I understand that. Gay person did ask you those questions, and yeah. obviously you had a perfect. And I have a responsibility to say what the Bible says when he asked me. I'm not here to preach my opinion. I'm here to preach the Bible. Do you have children? That, no, but Jesus needs Christ. You, you, Jesus is the one that you need to be saved. Okay, you I, need okay, him okay, as your okay, Lord is okay. okay. Wait a minute. You've asked questions to me. Let me ask you a question. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. What's your beliefs? Personally, I, I respect every single. No, I don't respect. Go on. I don't respect everything, but I respect certain aspects of people's religions, beliefs, you know, things like that. There's things that I find absolutely morally disgusting. For example, um, when um, Christians or what they call 
It's even Catholics or something Crusaders. like that. Crusaders. Pardon? Crusaders. No, not Crusaders. It's when... Um... Spanish Inquisition. Oh, oh, it's... oh, excuse me. Sorry, Crusades. I'm sorry. It's... Crusades? You know, when they think it's okay to have sex with a um, boy or child. Paedophilia. Thank you. Yeah. The paedophilia. Yeah. When they think yeah. like certain Christians are, they, are maybe You're going off... The priests, aren't you? The priests, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. When priests do that. I'm disgusted by that. I, 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 I understand that, that right? right? But those, right. No, but, but those, but those people who do do that... They're not Christians, mate. They're not no. Christians. They, they do it at the BBC. Yeah. <laughs> I, know, I, know they do I know they do it everywhere. I know they do it. It's not just religion. Right. They still say, in the name of God, they still preach to a whole group of people. Did Jesus teach that? Jesus said, suffer little children come to me. So that's a strong man argument. But they were saying, in the Bible, it says to like, you cannot cover. No, listen, listen. Things, I asked you, you a question. Know? I asked you a question. I said, "What do you believe?" You know why I asked you that? Because I was interested in what you believe, and all you've done is give us some negative stuff about the Bible. Okay. I'm asking what, okay, about your positive beliefs. Do you believe there's a God? Do you believe we evolved from apes? What is your belief? We're on about ultimate questions here. That's what I'm asking. I personally. Do you believe we evolved from apes? I do believe that. Yeah. What evidence do you have? Evidence. DNA, the fact that two people come together and that DNA combines from each other to form another person. Um, the fact that we didn't just evolve from apes, we also evolved from fish. Right, does DNA have information? Yes. Yeah, it also has chromosomes. Does it have a code? In? DNA does yeah. have a code. Yeah. You can break DNA down yeah, into a code. And where there's information, would you say there's a mind? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if the Encyclopedia Britannica, you've got information in there, yeah? And he's just said there's information Two in the elements start wait, wait, together to create something. Wait, 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 wait you're changing the topic. You went on about information and DNA. In DNA, in the Encyclopedia Britannica, some people put that in there, information by their brain, put information in there. And he said about DNA, and I said, is there information in there? And he said, yeah. So, if people put intelligence, put information in the Encyclopedia, how do you explain intelligence within DNA? Evolution. Not the same. Right, what is evolution? Define evolution. Uh, adapting to survive. Yeah, adapting to survive. It's not just that, it's mutation, natural selection, yeah. together. Is mutation a chance process? Yeah, right. because you can have a doubt, you could cut it up and you can have right. DNA and you got a... Okay, now, if mutation is a chance process, yeah. how does chance produce information and intelligence in the DNA? Honestly, I don't want to sound, I don't want to sound harsh saying this, but if two perfectly normal people have a child and the kid does come out with a deformity, no, God forbid, God forbid, the kid does come out with a deformity, because obviously that's a horrible thing to think about. Very good but, risk Right. You're equivocating now. You we're all about DNA and information. Yeah, but things are right. And, and you're what, equivocating. No, so. Basically, mutation is a chance process, yeah, yeah and natural selection. Yeah. But you've admitted that DNA has information, which you've also admitted that it's intelligence. You do not get intelligence by a chance process. Intelligence is something that it's the information passed on by both parents. Yeah, the, the, shit, the information, so. yeah. the information, if it's intelligence, requires an intelligent mind, not. Mutation. But if there's no mutation in the gene pool, how do you yeah. expect people to Mutation, how mutation. How many mutations happening within a gene? Billions. Yeah? And out of those billions, one minor change, that's it. Most of the mutations are bad, but one minor change is good. You need millions and billions of them good changes to change something. It can change a rabbit, but it cannot change a rabbit into a dog. Timing. Right, but the mathemat what's the mathematical imp what's the mathematical probability of mutations producing the gene? You do make a valid argument. What's the mathematical probability? Do you know what it is? I talked to a geneticist at Liverpool University, and he was giving powerful arguments against uh, for evolution. And I asked him, "What's the mathematical probability for the gene?" You know what happened? His eyes popped and he walked off. You know why? Because if you actually sat down and worked out the probability, it would be impossible. zero. It's impossible. It would be zero. You see, my friend, Jesus loves you and died on a cross for you. He wants you to come on. I'm not here to push my views on you. You know why? Because we've had a rational discussion. And I've respect everything respect, you've said. And you know what? If we went for a Costa coffee, you'd be giving me some good stuff. 
some good I, arguments. I, I, yeah. I, I, I honestly, and I, don't get me wrong, I perfectly respect what you, what you three gentlemen are doing today. I have no hatred towards you, you know, anything like that. But it's just more of a case of like, I understand that you want, I understand that you are preaching, you're saying your views, but there's just got to be a more delicate way of putting everything across. If I'd have done that, I'd have never met you. True. And you've made my day. True. I am too. I, I would have met, not met these ladies. You've made my day. You know, it's, it's you're just... Because you're cool dudes. It's just, more of, it's just more of a case of like, I, I, you yourself. I'm, I'm guessing you would like children. I'd love children. Can I just ask one question? Because yeah, I've heard a lot of it. What do you think about Jesus? Who is Jesus to you guys? A, a guy. Honestly, like, through everything that I've seen, I mean, don't get me wrong or anything like this. I mean, when I, I have read the Bible, when I think about, you know, Jesus, you know, doing his miracle, walking on water, giving sight, legs back to yeah. a good person, or you know, magically making fish and bread, you know, pop out. Honestly, I think Jesus, there was a person called Jesus, you know, millions, thousands and thousands of years, you know, whenever it was. I do believe there was a man called Jesus, but I don't think that his miracles were what, people, what people were saying. I think he was... A, 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 I think he was just somebody born into the gene pool who had more of a bigger view in life. You know, he was, instead of like saying that he gave sight back to somebody or he gave legs, I think medicine or things like that, you know, I think the fish thing, he taught people how to catch properly. He was, okay. he was a teacher, he was a healer, but in not healing sense, you know, like mystical healing. Doctor, you know, people like that. Um, are you objective in your analysis of history? I don't, I don't really, I didn't ever really pay attention in history. I'm okay. Not. The point is, is that David Hume, a, a British philosopher who was an atheist, said that he, he came up with five criteria to look at miracles that had happened. That they had to be intelligent people, honest people, they had to be reliable people. So he, he was an atheist and he looked, with his five criteria, he looked at the 17th century uh, Catholics, there was miracles happening amongst the Catholics in France, and he used his five criteria, five, ki five criteria, right? Uh, sorry, 16th century. He was in the 17th century, and when he did that, he said there must have been miracles. But he said, I can't believe in miracles because miracles don't happen. But it's, wait a minute, his five criteria, the miracles stood up to. No, yeah. I, wait, let me just finish. Let me just finish. Yeah. You go at the quantum level in physics, you got the quarks, and then beyond the quarks. Things pop in and out of reality, yeah? You don't know whether a miracle could not or could pop into reality. So, what you have to do is go back in history and examine the claim of a miracle. And if you're going to do that, you need a criteria. So I ask you, if you're objective, what is your criteria? Hume had five criteria, said that they were miracles, but then said, even though they agree with my five criteria, I don't believe they happen because they don't believe they happen. It, I don't believe they happen because they can't happen, miracles don't happen. But you can't use that argument because reality, the structures of reality at the quantum level, you don't know whether something supernatural could or could not pop in. So you, all you've got to do is be open to the evidence and the evidence is historical. Oh, I, I am, I am so very, very open-minded. Have you that. ever, have you got a criteria or do you want me to give you a criteria to go and look at what the Gospels say? I don't, I don't really... To be objective, I don't really want the criteria. Well, you so. need a criteria because you've got to be objective, otherwise you're going to be biased. I'm not really being, I'm not trying to be biased. So let, let's use biased. secular history. Let's you let, forget the Bible. Let's use secular history. Secular history, you use what is called uh, multiple attestation. What that is, if if you have a variety of lines of evidence for a claim in a historical investigation, it kind of backs up the truth of that statement. So, Christ died on a cross without the Bible, using multiple attestation, can we establish that he died on a cross? Um, I, honestly, I do believe, I do, I do believe that a man called Jesus did die on a cross, but I don't believe it was because he was a mystical man. I believe it was because the people who he was around thought he was too intelligent. They thought his brain was just like... Actually, let me put it, let me put this way. Let me put it this way to you. Um, when you see a person with uh, Down syndrome or Asperger's, right? I don't think I don't see that as a deformity. I see that as an actually gifted person because some of those people yeah, yeah. are some of the most unreal and most. 
gifted people I have ever laid my eyes on. Yeah. Like, yeah. I have a friend called Brandon, right? He goes to Berry College and he has Down syndrome. But he plays music like somebody who I have never seen before. That boy is on really gifted, mm. you know? Mm. That that's his that's his claim, you know what I mean? Um, I've seen people with Asperger's who are incredibly good at maths, or I've seen people who are incredibly good at reading, writing, and all this, their, their language skills are absolutely incredible. They can right, understand right. other languages better than most people. So, if anything, maybe Jesus was this person, maybe he had Asperger's, maybe he had Down syndrome, and because of his mind, he was more gifted than others. And I believe that's the reason why he was put on that cross, because people didn't, um, back in those days, did not understand what he had. Okay. Because they thought they were scared of someone being smarter than others. Okay. And that struck, that struck fear into other people. Your theory would, would might be interesting, but the one problem, he died and rose again. He died. He died. He died. rose again. Okay, so he died. Right. And died. He died and rose again. It's evidence that he rose again. He might. not have died. He might not have died. He might not have died. In the gospel, it says the blood came out with water. That's a medical fact that he died. It's a medical fact that he died. That's a medical fact that he died. So the medical medical fact there in the gospel. He died. Also, enemy attestation. They buried him. The enemy said they buried him. In a cave, where it seems to be quite open. But, but if the enemy said that they buried him, in history, that's good evidence. But, but who, but, I'm just saying this. But who's to say that somebody wasn't already hidden in that cave to actually bandage his wounds, uh, give him water, give him sustenance, and try and survive? You do. I don't, I don't, I don't. Google the medical information and I'm telling you, I don't trust you, I wouldn't trust you, I wouldn't trust you, I wouldn't trust you, I wouldn't trust you, with an already open candidate. But let's assume you're correct in what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Right? The evidence is there that he died, that's open, that's on the water. But let's assume that you're correct. What you're saying is, and this is an argument by Strauss, who is a skeptic, doesn't believe what I do. He said, so if that's the case, it's emaciated Jesus with holes in his hands and blood pouring down, walks into Peter's house and says, the prison's fucking dead, and then they go into the prison, start preaching, getting killed for it. Are they really going to be convinced by a guy who's just like half dead? They're not going to be like impressed with that, are they? I mean, the, I mean, the time span from when he rose was uh, 14 days. Uh, well, why are you no, he, he died. He, 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 uh, he died. He died. No, he died on Friday. Friday. So that's three. Just from that. You know, in our time, in, our time, in the Jewish time, it's all different. In our time, it's quite short. Yeah. Yeah. But, See, every, everyone makes perfect. I'll give you a point. Women's testimony is not valuable in the second century. First women to see the mother say that he's also the man. Let's start a new religion with him. The Marys, the three Marys, oh, yeah, the Madeleines. But the point is, is that these women said they were all from us. If you're starting a new religion, you wouldn't use women at that time. That's an anomaly for the skeptic to answer why is that. But the thing is, is that I'm here to tell you that Christ died in that cross to save you. You a whole, you, I, I, your I identity. Know. What's your identity? Who are you? As, don't answer it. But who are you as a person? I'm saying your identity is that you can be a child of God. You know that your status is that you're loved by God. And if you know that you're loved by God, you don't have to pretend to be something you don't have to impress anybody. You can just relax and be yourself. And, and God wants you to know that salvation is joy. I was, I was studying in ancient history the other day. I was listening to uh, a lecture on philosophy of the Pre-Socratic The Pre-Socratic philosophy is very interesting in morality. How to live. The Greek poets and playwrights were, were about how to live. The historians like Plutarch and Tacitus wanted to write history about how to live. And if you look at Jesus Christ, he, he was the disciples. 
so just because I have done this to you. Like, I, I, have had, I have had conversations in the past with other writers where they've said, you know, about my tattoos and things like that. And they're like, Jesus, they've said to me, Jesus wants like, to see the physical form of what you You know, like this. The, the reason for my tattoos are more of a case of my street ecology, uh, sort of being about the world itself. Like, I have rise and fall in my mother's. People ask me why I don't rise and fall. He rose. He rose. He tried to fly like the angels. You know, be like a bird. He fell. He fell. He got too close to the sun. He got close to the sun. Right, I understand. Right? A vice and virtue you can't be a moral being without being immoral being. It is physically impossible. And everybody has the power to be good and bad, and they can't be one and bad. I respect that. I respect the tattoos. I don't. You know, I don't want to be a good man. I don't want to be a good man. The thing is, is you. The tattoos that you're using, they, they, they mean a lot to you, you know, values, and I take that. But what I'm saying is there's more, there's more to life than that. To have a, wouldn't it be good if you could have a relationship? If there is a relationship, wouldn't it be good if you could have a relationship? One on one, fellowship, to know you. And I'm really into fellowship. To reach higher power. To know his love and peace in you. Number one, you've got to be honest with yourself. I, 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 you've got to be honest with yourself. The Ten Commandments make you honest. But like a mirror, they show you a heart. Don't lie, don't steal. All these Ten Commandments show you what you really like. And then when you see what you really like, that. we're all fake in many ways. When we see that we're fake, we realize we're doing it. We really, but then we have to understand this: that God made your price. You didn't pay your debt with money. You paid it in His own blood. Jesus came down, and when he went to that cross, it was prophesied 800 years before. Isaiah said this, he was through for our iniquities. And he came to die on that cross, and as he had a final cross, he said, he came to that cross. He's taking your punishment. If you confess your sin and believe in Jesus, you can be saved. But in a way, I don't want to sound harsh to all the time. Jesus is God. I respect Jesus a hell of a lot more than I do God. I respect his son. I know the Pope's blood, you know, sent his only son. Yeah, okay, but if you think of, if you think of God and Jesus as two beings, two separate entities. Okay. Okay. Like God had a son, so that is his son to two people. Like, like me, That's me, and then my father. That's a heresy called adoption. Okay, catch your breath. But um, like God oh, sent his rainy. God sent his only son. God sent his only son yeah. to suffer for man's sins. And in my in my eyes and my own thinking, I'm sorry for swearing. I think God's a bit of a bastard for sending his only son to die when God oh. could have helped. I've gone down. Okay. But yeah, yeah. but when you debate yeah. someone, you've got to debate the best of what they believe. So if I'm going to debate an atheist or a Muslim, I have to have charity and see what their position is. Yeah, yeah. And when you set up a, a straw man argument, a straw man position, our position is, is that God is one God. Not three gods, but one God. And within the Godhead, there are three persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the Council of Eternity, in John chapter 17, Jesus said, my glory with you before, before I was here. Yeah? So he had the glory with the Father in eternity as one God in three persons. It's a mystery. Now, the Father had the plan. Jesus said he accomplished the plan. So the argument that you set up doesn't work. Jesus, willingly, in eternity, made the decision as God to come down as a human die for us. So your argument would work if it was correct that Jesus and God are separate. But it doesn't work in Christian theology because Jesus is one with as God and God made the decision in Jesus to come and suffer for us. So it's actually when Christ is on the cross it is divine blood being shed for you. And it shows you if divine blood is being shed for you there's something seriously wrong with the world that the Son of God who is divine should shed his blood for you. But I don't know. I just don't think that man should suffer for everybody's sins. Why? 
because everybody everybody deserves a choice. Everybody deserves to at least sit once. Who says? I don't. Who says? I don't nobody says. Nobody says. Nobody, nobody says. Nobody just your says. opinion. Yeah, but I, I believe everybody has a choice. It's your opinion. And opinions are, are valid opinions, and, and, and I respect that. But opinions subjective. The Bible is God's word, and it's objective, says that Christ died for us. Now, why? Because we in the Western society are individualists. We think individually. But in ancient cultures, they failed, they, they were community people, right? So the chief was the head of the village. Yeah, they were the heads. So Adam came and he was the head of the human race and he fell and it brought original sin in. Jesus comes as the head Wasn't of the human race. Yeah, but he was, he was, God gave him the covenant and said, if you break this, I'm going to judge you. She ate the apple, but she went to him and he saw that she fell and then he chose to go with her. So he chose to go with her. Because he was given the, the promise. But that's what he would love. Them two were the only two people well, that, together, that's and, they were, and they were together, they were together I, think, I think it's more to do with empiricism. God gave a word and said, do not eat the flesh, and do not eat. He gave not, his not, word. Empiricism says, I trust my experience. And what Adam did, he did, they trust their experience. No, blog guy, he's given his word, don't want to know, I'm going to trust my experience. Science. My experience, I'm going to eat. That wasn't me like a militia. I want the knowledge. You say you were against yeah, like And that's been the running battle throughout right history. God's yeah. word, or it, science, experience. You know what I mean? And God's word, ultimately, in this book, says that if you trust in him, you can be saved. And Jesus died on our behalf because in the Bible there is a head, Adam, and he messed up. Now there's a new head, Jesus. It's like Obama, if he goes to him, uh, if he goes to Iran and the Sheikh stabs him, would that bring war between the countries? Why? Because he's the head. So headship of the human race. So your argument is valid in a Western democratic individual society, but not valid in terms of the Bible. I just watched. See what I mean in the Bible's context. It doesn't fully answer it without all the answer. No, no one can play. It just gives you a few pointers, maybe to help you to think why why is it that Jesus had to die? But all I'm saying is your identity, you get an identity crisis. There's, there's a copper, and he did stake out at night. I know, yeah, I know. And he, he would flash his badge and say, "I want to see the manager." We'd have to yeah, go get the manager. And he had his badge for CID. He gets to this nightclub, he flashed it. He says, "Go and get me the manager." She said, "No, I'm not getting the manager. Why do you want me to do it?" He was shocked. You know I'm CID. Go and get the manager. Now, no, I'm not doing it, tell me what. No, she know who I am. Flashed his badge again. Go and get the manager. But you know who I am. She said, no. Tell me. Tell, tell me. What, 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 what's going on? I want to get the manager. Like, like politicians, you get a politician any form of power, and they will use that power in any form. He looked at his badge and it wasn't his CID badge. He was flashing up his wife in the beginning. But what I'm trying to say is, is that your identity means a lot. If you're the policeman and you flash your card, it gives you authority. If you're a drunk on a street, there's a certain identity in that. What you are, who you are, and I want to say that there's an identity that you could have that is the true identity. And that identity is this, that you can be a, a new creature in Christ. You can be redeemed, saved, and blessed in Christ. You can be adopted in this family. See, I was, I was a Christian. I was a Christian. I lived with my father. I was a Christian. I did go to church. I think it really hit me the most when my number died. It's like the first death in the family that I ever experienced. And it was when I was nine years old. My number passed away. And obviously, when you think about like, that, nah, that's what broke the because I was baptized. I did everything. I went to. I'm not going to lie. 
did do some hard matches, you know. It's just that when a relative of mine passed away, I guess in my own brain, it was like... That, 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 that's, what, that, that's, what, that's what broke me. It was either a choice of like, she's with God, Jesus, you know, in a better place, you know, she's not hurting, or I'm angry, you know, I was a child, I was upset, you know, I, I had to eat, frustration, something. Mate, take care. Have a take day. care. Hey, good to meet you. Some good, some good discussion. <laughs> you're, you're good yes, yes. good yes. It's lovely to hear you two talking together. All right, and it was lovely you shook my hand. Yeah, that was lovely. Have a good day, guys. Take it easy. Be on YouTube to watch.